Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we'll cover some basic topics, mainly the path to wealth. So this is a suitable video not only for new players, but also for the more experienced ones. If you have ever been grinding for entire ages and basically got nothing in return, then go ahead. Click subscribe button because in this video we will try to make grind most effective. This video contains only free to play mechanics. So if you are going to spend anything, you just add extra value to things available to everyone. But let's start from the very beginning. Due to the desire to achieve the required combat rating, many people spend their precious time trying to drop better legendary items. And I have to admit that short term it is very effective and satisfying. But like most short-term investments, and profitable, sooner or later you will realize that all you have achieved is some scrap because all your equipment will need to be replaced anyway. So if you are going to play a bit longer, then you should always save your time for long-term investments. Unfortunately, due to the lack of immediate results, Many people does not care for this aspect of the game. So let's take a look at what's really going on behind the scenes of your character and what really makes a small but continuous progress. Saying to your daily activities is like saying nothing. So in my opinion, you should start every day with for aspirants keys from Ibn Fad Sanctrum. It doesn't take much time and makes you remember about the daily amount of keys to get, so collect for and open the first chest. Then buy another five keys from Hilt's Trader. If you have the Dedesis Blessing, then you can get three more keys for doing three fast rifts. This way you will have twelve keys, but that's not all. Another twelve keys for participating in the Shadow Assembly, plus up to ninety-eight keys for PvP each cycle. However, I will only include keys that are guaranteed. So we can have 20 for keys per day, 156 per week, 669 per month, 8,140 per year. That's all the game has to offer. We'll come back to these numbers later. Now let's move on to another long-term investment of our time, regular gems. The fastest way to get them is to find or join a hidden lair. It doesn't matter if you do them alone or in a party for completing each task there you get one gem. This way you can get six and tradable gems per day. Unfortunately, the next gems consume more time. We can get them for grinding in a full party or in dungeons. It also requires full party. Personally, I recommend the second option. In this way, we can get up to 12 tradable gems. If you have the soul of a trader, you can additionally try to take advantage of the price differences of gems on the market. Selling tourmalines is still profitable. Not a financial advice, though.
Don't forget about ten jams once per week from Hilt's Trader. In this way, we have the opportunity to collect 18 gems per day, 136 per week, 584 per month, 7,100 per year. We will come back to these numbers later. When it comes to legendary items, I recommend doing one bestry first, then three dungeons. This will allow you to collect a few gems in the meantime. If you don't have time, I'd leave it for another day. However, at this point you will be able to collect your 300 platinum, especially for free to play is a significant number. It's worth doing because it's 300 platinum per day, 2,100 per week, 9,000 per month, and 109,500 per year. Let's move on to legendary crests. Unfortunately, the game doesn't offer much here. We can get two eternal crests per week, one from Elder Rifts and one from Raid with your Warband. I recommend purple ones, because whatever comes up you can sell it later on the market and get back at least some of the platinum or make quite good profit. Eventually you can drop the gem for yourself. Considering that this is a typical gambling mechanic, I personally stay away from oranges. But that's up to you. If you play for PV, then the only 5-star gem you need is BSJ for extra movement speed. The rest can be won into stars because they have a very good damage indicator. I will probably make a video of it if required. To not stay behind with the combat rating, and to be able to buy Eternal Crest. Remember to do raids twice a week with your team. This is enough to reach almost 1,000 Warband points, and anything over 1,000 is no longer time efficient. It's worth considering whether you have enough time for that or not. So taking into account that the servers have been available for over half a year, let's go back to the values that represent the achievable number for one year of playing regularly. Decide whether they are small or large. I also encourage you to check the prices on your server and in your country. Its value in real money is quite high, although it is relative to everyone. I decided to check how much only the gems on my server are worth, buying orbs and then platinum. We need 142,000 orbs, which means that we have to buy 20 the most expensive orb packages. It would cost us nearly 3,000 US dollars. So remember that in this game it pays to do only the most effective things. It doesn't reward you for playing 10 levels above the server level or for sitting 10 hours on some spot, especially if you haven't done the steps in this video before. This game is a marathon. I think all players from previous ones understand who didn't kill Mephisto 100 times a day. I did even though it was quite pointless. So be patient and systematic, the rest is just a matter of time. I also encourage you to watch my previous video. You will find out how important keys and regular gems are. If this episode was helpful to you, then don't forget to click the like button. Also subscribe the channel to stay updated. Thanks for all members who decided to support the channel. And as always, 
Thanks for watching.